Welcome back, and today we're taking a look at the Artisan Cutlery Boa. This is a collab with Triple Stripe Knives. Mr. Jonathan Shaw is the man behind Triple Stripe Knives, and he's a super young individual. I saw him at Blade Show. Super nice uh, young man, and I think this is his first design. The Boa is a Kickstarter campaign that will end in eight days as of 10-9-23. And if you're wondering, why would you want to join that? Because you get 30% off of the, uh, the regular release price. And the regular boas, like this one, this is called the Rustic Boa with the green canvas micarta inlays. You can also get it with a full tie handle with stippled titanium. You could also get it with murdered out, all blacked out, called the Tacti Boa with a carbon fiber inlay. And then you have a full dressed boa with a mirror polish blade and mirror polish scales coming in at $6.99. Or you can get one with the dressed out handle that is on both sides, as you can see, along with the pocket clip and the backspacer. You can get one with this handle and the sand polish blade like on the regular ones for $5.69 if that's something you want to go for in a dress knife. We'll have all necessary links down in the description. So what we have here is a medium sized EDC knife at 7.25 inches overall length with a 3.11 inch harpoon drop point blade that should be very versatile because that tip sits in line with the center of the pivot so just meaning that your belly is not going to be too crazy swoopy up here and should be good at just about any type of cutting you do got a nice top swedge up here that doesn't go all the way down to that tip so you still have a nice and robust tip if you need to do any kind of like bear like boring it in there or whatever you do with your tips there is no jimping up top, however, this little Puna Jerry right here is an excellent spot to rest the thumb to get a nice locked in grip, or you can always overshoot it if you had bigger hands. You do have a sharpening toil, however, it just barely clears that plunge line. You may have one or two sharpenings before it starts to widen up back here. Uh, however, if you need to widen that up, you can because this has an internal stop pin. The finish on these blades is called their sand wash. It's like a um, kind of like a high satin finish or like a foggy satin finish where it's very reflective. Takes fingerprints pretty darn well. Uh, I would have I would have preferred a stone wash finish, but I still think it looks beautiful. The blade steel on these regular versions is CPM S35 VN, and on the dress versions it's S90V. I really wish they would have went with a deep hollow grind on here, a thin hollow grind, just so it could thin it out a little bit more because you have a very short grind height and this is a flat grind. So it's only coming down to 24 thousandths behind the edge, which is not terrible, especially if you keep it nice and sharp, but I would have much preferred a thinner grind. So I think it's time to see how this thing performs. Knife came pretty sharp out of box. It definitely hasn't wasn't their best edge that I've gotten out of art artisan so far, but it was definitely uh, serviceable. And you know, I can't tell how much bite it has at this point, but we'll see that later on. Uh, good blade shape for this. Like I said in earlier, it's, it should be very versatile. You have that lower tip on this drop point, so you don't have crazy belly to it and you should be able to cut you know most cardboard depending on how long it is with this uh blade shape so far so good and i definitely can tell that it's not super thin behind the edge um doing a little testing for the ergos and how well that edge wants to bite um it's doing great this is a very very comfortable handle they're contoured plus you have on this particular one, you have the micarta, so it's nice and grippy and soft. So yeah, this was one of the most comfortable knives in hand in a while. And I was able to get a lot of force in that hammer grip. I mean, I'm really bearing down into this wood. And the edge, you know, it's, it's, it's biting pretty quick. Um, no hot spots to speak of. That pocket clip's nice and uh, out of the way of my palm. And nothing, nothing was poking me or prodding me. Your tip's low enough to do drag cuts like this if you want to drag it through there or you could just use the belly. However, you're still going to have a perfect amount of belly to do pretty much any type of cutting task and a pinch grip on a flat cutting surface. It's 
passing through the material pretty good not the best because this has a very short height flat grind so i can definitely feel that extra thickness um, but as long as you have a nice sharp edge it should be able to perform all these fairly easily um, all your edc tasks was what i really meant to say but so far so good get to the 10 ounce denim and it has some bite to it it's not the most aggressive edge but i have found that s35 en doesn't get a super sticky aggressive edge or it doesn't hold it that long um they usually do a good job with their heat treats so i've never had a really bad artisan um so I, I, definitely okay there now i will say up there by the tip when i started doing this half inch sisal rope it had a lot of aggression right there at the tip so it got a lot sharper or they just left it a little bit toothier uh, which is usually just the opposite usually the tip is where they start to round it over or uh, it's not as sharp as the rest but nice and uh, sharp at that tip we're able to go through the sisal rope fairly easily you know especially in that belly I'm just basically pushing forward with that uh, edge and it's comfortable once again that my card is gripping onto my gloves and uh it doesn't feel uncomfortable in the least which is not something i can say for a lot of knives when i'm doing this portion of testing this is definitely a miserable portion of the test but i do it for you guys and girls so um we end up getting through uh 60 cuts i'm just struggling because this is my, the last of my sisal rope i got to go out and buy some more but this is the last of it right here so i got one more little piece like this that i'm gonna grab in just a second and it, this is it we get through 60 and then that's my absolute last piece before i have to go get some more that's definitely doable there um edge still feels okay i definitely have a working edge left on it and uh yeah i, I enjoy doing the testing with this one All right, let's see how that edge is after all that cutting. Pretty impressive. I, I didn't think it'd be that great. No hang-ups. I call that good. Now let's take a look at the deployment and the action of the knife. It's riding on ceramic ball bearings with a ceramic detent ball, so it's nice and smooth. You have three different means of deployment with the blade hole, thumb stud, and front flipper, and they all work outstanding. This one has a very well-tuned detent, so you can reverse flick with that blade hole. You can thumb flick with the thumb studs, and you can easily roll that front flipper around. I love whenever, you know, if I have to have a front flipper, I love that design where it curves up. It has jimping. I would have preferred some fine cut jimping, just it grabs the thumb better. Uh, but this one is still nice and grippy. I have no problem slipping off. You can do the reach around easily. And if I want to slow roll it, I can. Just a very well-tuned detent. You don't find them done like that all that often. Usually they got it either too strong for the front flipper or, you know, too weak for the front flipper. But these two work. as It's, it's really nice when you see all of them work great. Let's take a look at these handles. You have contour titanium scales with a green canvas micarta inlay that offers a good bit of traction. It's nice and soft. It's a good micarta. You have Torx T8 throughout. Excellent job. Love seeing that. You don't have any gaps in, in the, at least the one I have. There's no crazy gaps or anything that I can see. Very well done. You have a mill titanium pocket clip that offers good retention it goes in and out of the pocket nicely you do have a little bit of a ramp right here i had no problems with it going in and out of the pocket it held it fine and it wasn't tearing up the pocket because it's sitting on top of this micarta on this particular one now i will say on the full dressed one um it being that the the tight the timascus full mirror, mirror polished it is a little bit slicker going in and out of the pocket so just be aware of that if you got thin pants on or something like that and you buy that knife, be very careful because it could easily come out of the pocket. Now it's only tip up right hand carry only. I don't know if they have lefty versions or not. If I remember and see that on the Kickstarter, I'll put it up here. But if you're a lefty, just go check out the Kickstarter campaign that I have linked down below. You have a mill titanium backspacer with artisan on it, a hidden lanyard post back here. Love that they didn't put an extra hole in the knife. You don't have any internal milling because you have all this milled out for the inlays on both sides. Lockup on my knife is about 40 to 50 percent. 
Access to the lock bar is, is it's decent. It's in line with the uh, show side scale, but the little chamfers right there, I can get my finger in there pretty easily. Uh, if you had fat sausage fingers, it may be a little bit difficult for you. My particular knife has no up and down, no left and right, solid lock up. You do have a hardened stainless steel lock bar insert in there. The weight of the micarta one first in grams, 87.5, and the full dress comes in at 100 grams. And the micarta comes in at 3.09 ounces, and the full dress comes in at 3.5 ounces. I've carried both this one and the dress a good bit, and I had no issues with the carry weight. I thought they were great, especially on this one, and even with the full dress, I, I didn't realize I even had the knife in my pocket. Size comparison with the Ontario Rat 1 and 2, Spyderco PM2 and Para 3. And it's identical in length to the Giant Mouse Ace Quarta and almost the same length as the Wii Coolix. All right, now for my nitpicks and complaints. These are mainly nitpicks. They're not hurting the functionality of the knife. I would have much rather a stone wash finish. Uh, I would have loved for them to extend this sharpening tool a little bit more. However, I can do that if I ever need to. Even though it works just fine, I, I prefer uh, fine cut jimping over that, but it still works excellent, no problem whatsoever. And if they don't have uh, if they don't have a lefty version, sorry about that, lefties. And lastly, like I said, the only thing that could have made this knife any more perfect is if they would have put a nice thin hollow grind on here, that would have made it outstanding. However, as it sits, I love the size. I love the comfort in hand. I love the action, especially all three methods work just the same, outstanding. Perfect size for me. I think it looks very nice, whether I want to carry this one or the dress one. I love the blade shape. I love the overall aesthetics. I know some people don't like the large blade hole, but it makes it easier to deploy uh, with a stiffer detent because you can get down low. So overall, do I think it's worth it? Yes. But the 199 or whatever, definitely, definitely, definitely think it's worth the price tag. You know, I if I'm gonna if if I were to buy a second one of any of these, it would be this one or another one of the, the $199 ones. Uh, as far as the dress, don't get me wrong, <laughs> this one's never gonna probably go anywhere, and I absolutely love it. But as a functional EDC tool, um, it's probably not the best at that. Uh, just because, you know, it, this is slippery. Um, it does have s 9 steel, but, you know, it's more of a dress piece. And I'm going to be carrying this to a wedding that I'm going to here next week. So, definitely, definitely nice. Nicest knife in my collection or the most jeweled up in my collection. And, yeah, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one, Pete. Uzz. Uzz.